Hello, good morning. Just turn this hurricane down. We've been we've been washed away in the southeast. How's the weather where you are? We've had like uh, floods. And yet today the road's pretty dry this morning. Looks like it's all drying out. Most incredible amount of water. Places that normally flooded, flooded, and the places that didn't normally flood have flooded as well. I had to, uh, I've got a flat roof and uh, it's got a drain hole in it, but it inevitably gets clogged up with leaves and moss and stuff. So uh, when it's blocked, I have to uh, get on the roof and unblock it. And I know when it's blocked because water starts dripping down the chimney onto the the wood fire, the wood burner. So I went, uh, so, and it's always when it's windy and pouring down with rain that it gets blocked. So I was up on the flat roof getting soaked when I got home yesterday. So what else? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> still very quiet, still only booked up half a week. So, in fact, uh, probably booked up four sessions out of 10. And uh, those four sessions aren't rammed, you know. I mean, probably three and a half would be closer. So three and a half out of 10, I mean, you know, you can play mind tricks with yourself and say, well, I could be one of those dentists that has Friday off, in which case it's three and a half sessions out of eight. But, and also being a private practice, it's, you know, you don't expect to be rammed. And we've got through another month paying the bills, da, 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 paid the wages yesterday. So, that's all you've got to do, live it one month at a time, one month at a time, just see if you can get through the month. I keep getting these stupid emails from HMRC saying that I've paid late and so I'm owed two pounds, which is going up one pence a week or something. Uh, but it's a right, it's a disaster, their system. Honestly, it's a disaster. It was better in the old days when they gave us all like a log book and we just looked up how much was payable and paid it. Now what happens is you get a computer and uh, they, uh, the computer sends off your data and then they tell you, and the computer tells you how much tax you've got to pay and then they tell you how much tax you've got to pay and they'd never, never agree. And in the old days, you just used to get all the sheets out all over the floor and find out where the mistake was. But now you've got no way of finding out where the mistake is. Just got two ir irreconcilable totals. And of course you then have to pay their total, which then makes the total on your computer wrong. So, and then when, when they come round and they say, oh, Mr. Watson, you know, like, just won't pop round because like you were late with your last monthly payment or something. They just, I think they ask you three questions like, you do know that you have to pay tax. Uh, and uh, have you got the money to pay the tax? That's all they ask. I thought when they're gonna send someone round, I thought, oh, great, I'm gonna have a chat with them about the, fact that their system never agrees with my system even though they're supposed to well all she said well no they're using the same data we're only using the data you send us and i'm like yeah but what are you doing with it <laughs> i don't know what you're doing with it i don't know what my program's doing with it and i don't know why the two of you don't agree so it's nothing to do with me right it's all it's all been taken out of my hands and uh, because it's been taken out of my hands i can't fix it Whereas in the past, it was in my hands and I could fix it. Anyway. So. It's Tuesday today, hygiene today, our most popular day. I had a bit of a to do with the hygienist last week because she's told me that she'd rather go home than see a patient, which had, uh, who'd forgotten about their appointment, so we rescheduled them later in the day. 
because we have a policy whereby we don't charge them the PFA charge or the DNA charge, providing they come later in the day. Uh, but she said no, she'd already, uh, you know, planned to go home. Although she hadn't told anyone that she planned to go home, you know, in the middle of, in the middle of the time that was uh, allocated to her. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, you know, we, we had a bit of a full and frank discussion, which ended up with the, the ridiculous conclusion that, uh, of her insisting, because she had to insist on something, didn't she? She couldn't say no, actually, no, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you I was going home. Or, uh, you know, or you're quite right which would have been the right solution, but no, she was like, she was annoyed because we made her late for her lunch. So by booking this patient in, so she said, don't book any patients on the end of my session unless you ask me in advance. Well, I mean, we don't know when the end of her session is. Apparently the end of her session is after her last patient, whenever she decides to go home. So not, not the end of the actual session, so uh, so now we've got this stupid situation where we're, we're not extending our sessions. So any patients that need to get booked in are booked in in the gaps in the middle and are not put on the end, which is, you know, you might say, well, that's, that's very sensible, angry. You know, you've got to fill up the gaps before you, uh, before you extend the opening hours. But, but on the other hand, you know, if someone can't come or in this case, if someone's just forgotten to come in and can't, you know, and he's in, he's going to take an hour or two to get here, then, you know, surely the, the thing is that to, providing they can get here during a time when she would have been working anyway, um, then, then it's ridiculous to turn that business away. And that's what she wanted to do. I mean, it, it, we got this stupid situation where we booked the patient in at half past one or for example, after which she could have gone home, but she, she had arranged to go home at one, but she was booked to work until five. So I could have booked that patient in at four o'clock and then she would have been able to have gone at one, but would have had to have come back at four. But then she's like, uh, uh, you know, I want you, I want you to ring this patient up and tell them this, tell them that they, although they forgot and they've offered to come in and the appointment's been rearranged, I want you to ring them again and cancel that appointment and tell them that they're going to have to come in next week. <laughs> which is assuming that they can come in next week, which was, you know, I mean, sort of a patient in the book is worth two in the next week's book, isn't it? And so I said, no, you, you, if you want to ring him and tell him that, you have to ring him. But she wouldn't ring him and tell him that. And that's, but she said, because now it's not my job, you know, it's your, 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 you handle the reception. And, but I'm very much of the opinion that, no, if you're going to ask, if you're going to ask the reception to do something, there has to be something that you would be prepared to do yourself. You know, I'm not, I don't believe in hiding behind the reception or using reception as a cover for unreasonable behavior. So the rule is, if you ask reception to ring a patient and tell them something, it has to be something that you would be happy to ring them and do yourself. And so I said, well, look, I'm not going to ring this patient, uh, having just rebooked them and tell them that we can't now see them and they can need to come in next week. And so then we had a ding, we had a bit of a ding dong about whether it was her job or reception's job. And she completely missed my point that, that like the point I was making was that it was something that she felt reception should do, but was not reasonable to the point where she would have asked for it herself. That that point was lost on her. That point was was taken over by a discussion about the fact that uh, she pays the reception to make the phone calls, even if they're stupid. Basically, she didn't say that, but that's what she was implying. That she can be as uh, as fickle as she likes and uh, muck, the, muck the patient's belt as much as she likes and get reception to do the dirty work for her. 
and that was what what I the point I was trying to make but she was like no and then you know and then she made what I think is a mistake by saying that you know she thinks that the whole this whole problem is um, you know has arisen out of the fact that we are now working without a receptionist even though the you know that the the lack of a receptionist is not um, was not relevant really to the, our ability to make a call and we were all standing around the phone deciding you know having this having this discussion um, <laughs> there were plenty of people who could have made the phone call but in the end she said that you know that the, the problem all stems from my, my refusal to make the second phone call stemmed out of the, my decision to this sort of thing could have been or would have been handled by a receptionist and that I, basically I was refusing to make the call um, because I didn't have a receptionist that I could have told to have made the call yeah so in other words she's assuming that I'm I'm suffering from the same problem that she had which is a reluctance to ring the patient to ask them to do something which uh, any any employed receptionist would have had effectively would have had no choice but to have done which is to muck them about so you know so the argument went something along the lines of I want to I've, I've decided to go home I want to muck this patient about well and I said well I'm not going to muck them about you can ring them up and muck them about and she said no I pay you to muck them about and I said, well, I'm not going to muck them about. And if you don't want to muck them about, they're not going to get mucked about. And then she said, well, you used to have a receptionist. We used to pay to muck them about. Your fault, it's your fault for getting rid of the receptionist who would have mucked them about. So, so that didn't end very well, to be honest. I mean, the, my, my problem is that all the staff and, and all the patients and everybody around me, really, the banks and everything, they fall into three broad categories. I don't think that you need need to have more than three. Okay, there are people who are working with you, people who are friendly and nice, funny, enhance your quality of life, will go the extra mile, uh, who are a pleasure to work with, who you look forward to seeing, and uh, you want to spend more time with and and do more business with. So that's one group, and then. There's the other group who are people who are nothing but trouble, uh, uh, email you at 10 o'clock at night, ring you at 7.25 in the morning, uh, don't think logically, don't think rationally, um, don't, don't tell you, lie to you, don't tell you the background to their decisions so you can't understand why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, or are just generally selfish and greedy, you know, like um, most of the population just right, and on s s and greed and selfishness. Um, and uh, and then you've got the group in the middle who are not who are neither who are neither particularly helpful, but are, are neither particularly useless or or unpleasant. And unfortunately, in that discussion, she moved from the the pleasant helpful group into the just just a part of my sphere you know just someone who who gets what they they want and gives me what I want you know so we'll see if we can rehabilitate that but I don't think we're going to be able to do it because <coughs> um, We've got another another issues come up in that when she's self-employed and and she's self-employed for a very good reason, which is my last hygienist was employed and uh, was very happy when someone didn't turn up. You know, used to be, you know that was great. That was an excuse to put the kettle on, get together with the nurses, have a good old chin wag, uh, and got paid anyway, whether the patients turned up or not. So I've never really, I mean, I inherited this employed hygienist and. Um, Fortunately for me, she decided to leave fairly soon afterwards, which was great. I mean, she went to work, I believe, with the, with the associate who left, who I think also did me a favour. Um, and so I took on a, um, and, and any hygienist from that point who came to work for me was always going to be um, self-employed. So 
on the self-employed basis, uh, if the patient doesn't turn up, then the, the hygienist doesn't get paid. They're working on a situation very similar to the dentist, and both sides lose because they lose their half of the fee, and we lose our half of the fee, which goes towards paying for the nurse. So, um, what had happened when, when she put through her April invoice, she'd invoiced me for about five patients who hadn't turned up. And of course, this is the first time I'm doing the accounts now, which actually only took me about 45 minutes. So, and that's another thing. I mean, my, my receptionist practice is going so well uh, because the, the work that she was doing, I mean, she was always, always, always had all the bits of papers out, reconciling the accounts, reconciling the bank balance, etc., etc. And I was con really concerned when I took over the job. Oh, this is going to be a big job, you know. And in fact, I sat down and did the whole bloody lot in 45 minutes. I mean, God knows what that woman was doing. I mean, God knows what that woman was doing. I mean, and that's another thing, you know. I mean. A sign of an employee or a self-employed person who's not really, not really working with you, you know, who's who's likely to end up getting the, the long walk on the short pier, is someone who's not, who's listening to you or appears to be listening to you, but he's not doing what you ask. So, for example, um, you know, with the receptionist, I used to uh, walk around the corner and she'd always be on her mobile phone, always texting, 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 Facebook in, Facebook in. And she's got two young daughters and you know they're in their 17 18 they're going to university etc but you know and i used to say to her you know can you put their phone away can you put the phone away <clears throat> this was at a point when she probably could have saved her job by putting putting her back into some projects that might have brought some patients in but but was all the time on the phone which is why i was i'm probably staking the edge off the sadness to see her go because, um, you know, uh, to, to a large extent, I think she was the architect of her own downfall by just assuming that, that she was in a job for life. But, um, but, you know, I would ask her to do things and then they wouldn't get done. You know, the famous uh, footer in the email or, or the mobile phone. You know, she would be, for a couple of days, they would be gone and then they would be out again. So. Um, and that falls into the, you know, the category of these people. People, if they're not doing what you want, it's either because they don't, they, they don't have the skills, or they haven't understood what you want, or they, they're we're being willfully disobedient. And unfortunately, a lot of people are willfully disobedient. If they don't understand what you want them to do exactly, or they don't have the skills, then it's your responsibility to sort them out. But willful disobedience is usually a prelude to, uh, you know, a parting ways. And where it's manifesting with the hygienist is obviously this, you know, this, you know, she says, oh, I'd like to be booked up all day when she's not booked up solidly all day. And I say to her, well, what, what's the work like at your other practices? And she says, well, it's very quiet there as well. So you're like, OK, so what you're expecting me to, 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 to be Harry Potter and sort of wave a magic wand and do something that, you know, and change the economy. Well, you know, the fact is that if she was only booked up half a day a week, like everywhere else, then she would be booked solid. Um, but we, we we give her a whole day, we get a nurse in for a whole day. And so she has some gaps, which is regrettable. I mean, I'd like to see her working solid, but you know, at this point in time, that's just not uh, possible. So, but so why complain, you know? Anyway, I've asked her to um, be less sort of uh, regimented with the patients. So we don't really recommend floss because we, we concentrate on brushing. When someone is brushing really well, if there's a need for them to floss and they've got the skills to do it, then we, we ask them to do it. But for the most part, we get patients in who have been told to use interspaces, flosses, mouthwashes, and uh, not disclosing tablets, the one thing that they should have been, but um everything and then we have to try and stop them doing it so but when when the patient comes in she's very regimented and sort of she doesn't sit down and say oh hello hi how are you how you been how's your dog sort of thing the, the sort of the really sort of the nice private approach it's like oh right okay so now what can you tell me about your brushing regime 
and, and really these patients don't come in to be interrogated. You know, they've had like a 15 minute chat with me and I said, no, send it to the hygienist. And then the interrogation starts. And but hygienists are naturally like this. This is the problem. So I'm going to have to have a chat with her about that as well. And also the fact that she's she's still recommending interspace brushes and flossing and all sorts of stuff, which in the absence of poor plaque control, not, not that I, I would not stop her recommending all that stuff if the patients could brush their effing teeth. But we're talking about patients whose plaque control is whose plaque is not under control, and yet they're being recommended to floss. Anyway, she invoiced me for some patients, and uh, I had to tell her that she's not going to get paid for them. But then she said, but, but you know, if they're on the plan, you always told me if they don't come in, then I will get paid for them. And I said, yeah, well, um, you know, if they if they come to see me and they and they booked in with you for scale and polish and they don't need a scale and polish, and I'd say to them, you don't need scale and polish, you can go, then I will pay you because we've got the money anyway, and I don't think it's fair for me to tell you that you know I'm going I can cancel your appointments at short notice whereas the patients can't or if uh, the patient only needs like a polish or they only need like a quick flick around the two lower incisors and I do it I do it for them at the checkup and 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 say to them right okay you can go home then I will still pay you because that we've we've rendered a better service as far as the patient's concerned they don't have to wait so long they've had the job done and uh, they can go but that's very different from saying if a patient just doesn't turn up I'm going to pay you because they're there. But, and hopefully you can see that, but I don't know why she can't see that. I'm just going to go, I'm going to have to go and discuss it with her today. What, what the difference is between that. But I think that we've got an individual here where the, where the, she's losing the nuance, you know, the nuances are lost and uh, it's very difficult when you're, you're, um, you know, you're making an argument and that argument is completely opaque to the person you're talking to they just literally can't understand what you're what you're what you're getting at very dif very difficult anyway we'll see how it goes today it'll either go very well or very badly um, i'll let you know all right uh you i hope you have a better day <laughs> talk to you tomorrow bye